The Middle East now, where Israeli airstrikes have killed dozens in Lebanon. A powerful airstrike in central Beirut killed at least 15 people. This marks the fourth Israeli airstrike this week targeting the central area of Beirut. Another 13 were killed in attacks northeast of the Lebanese capital. Four children are among the dead. In Gaza, Palestinian medics say Israeli airstrikes have killed at least 120 people over the last 48 hours. Strikes have been reported in both northern and southern Gaza. At least nine people were reportedly killed in a strike on a building housing several families in Khan Yunis. Meantime, hundreds have gathered in Israel for an anti-government protest and to call for the release of the hostages still being held in Gaza. It comes as Hamas is claiming a female Israeli hostage has died in the enclave. A spokesperson for the group's armed wing says the hostage was killed in an area of northern Gaza that had been struck by Israeli forces. Israel has yet to comment on that claim. Let's now invite Glenn Ignazio, military analyst and retired Air Force Special Operations Commander in this conversation. Glenn, thank you again for your time. Appreciate it. Always good to be with you, Akshay. Thank you. So, Glenn, days after the ICC issued warrants against Israel's Netanyahu for crimes against humanity, Israel launches a fresh attack on a hospital in northern Gaza, reportedly killing two and wounding several of its staff members. Your thoughts on these latest strikes in Gaza? Well, the latest strikes continue as far as what Hamas is doing and what Israel continues to attack them. You know, as we talked about how they went through Gaza and all the way down, that Israel was to eliminate all the infrastructure of Hamas. But they seem to be popping up and there's still strikes going back and forth. But this strike in itself in the northern part has, unfortunately, and what is believed to kill another hostage. And that seems to be the containment here, the biggest issue for this, this conflict to continue. And so hopefully these hostages will be released, the combat will stop. But at this point, we don't even have any kind of ceasefire negotiations even happening like they did before in Qatar. So it's really hard to see how this conflict is going to stop. Let's just talk about the hostage situation a little more. Hamas, as we know, as you were discussing, is claiming that a hostage has been killed in an Israeli strike. Israel is yet to confirm any of that. But Glenn, my question being, is there any indication at all on how many hostages are alive? What is their condition? And also the fact that there are hundreds and thousands sometimes, people on the streets of Tel Aviv still putting so much pressure on Netanyahu administration to do more to secure their release. Yeah, great question. And, and, you know, the difficulty is of exactly the situation with the hostages. I mean, even the ones that have been released were in such tough condition uh, from before. Even the last one that was rescued was in, in really malnutrition, loss of weight, uh, wasn't uh, above ground for a long period of time at all. So the conditions of all those, especially with the ages of some of them, is really tough to really find out if they're alive at all. And like I said, that's the biggest focus right now as far as getting people out. As far as the protesting and everything on the streets, it is horrific. I did a negotiation for a hostage in the Middle East, and that took a year. And I'll tell you, every day is absolutely horrific for the families and friends where it just does not get left up. So I understand that the protesting is going on. And honestly, the hostages are the focal point of the situation right now. And if they were to be released, I would hope that that would end this conflict. But I'll tell you, with Netanyahu's decisions, it's really hard to say if that would actually do that. Yeah, and speaking about the focal point, while, of course, the war in Gaza was about everything, but we've seen what's happened in Lebanon, for example. The escalation has continued. Lebanon is saying that Beirut is being uh, pounded time and again. Latest news is that at least 15 people have been killed in the capital itself in the latest strikes. Uh, what's your take on this, this escalation, if I may call it? It seems like a word we are using very often, but what else do you call this? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the biggest parts about this was how Iran was so influential on the attacks, both from Hamas being funded and trained and Hezbollah being funded and trained. And that was the biggest thing to put pressure on Israel remotely is that Iran had that influence. And so we see the attacks. And I think it's been about 3,500 killed in Lebanon itself and over 40,000 in Gaza itself. And so one of the difficult parts is about this warfare is in all honesty, it is difficult that Hamas and Hezbollah has built these tunnels and put these incredible facilities underneath protected areas. That is one of their defenses. And, and unfortunately, Israel's had to take these areas out and they put warnings out there for people to stay away, but they're still taking these sites out and people are still getting killed. 
there seems to be some part of progress on a negotiation between Lebanon or excuse me, between Hezbollah and Israel. And that's possible if that continues to go and they're actually able to put that 18 mile buffer between Lebanon and Israel again. That is a possibility to put some peace in the northern areas. Well, that will be very welcome for sure. But let me ask you one more thing before I let you go, please, Glenn. What's your experience and analysis of the war telling you at the moment? What's next with, for example, A, the ICC warrant on Netanyahu's head? Secondly, the nations so divided in their approach on this issue. Thirdly, Donald Trump all set to take over the White House next. What happens with this war? That's a great situation with all those three you mentioned. I think the ICC doing this really doesn't have much influence on it. I don't believe it, it impacts Netanyahu and people are raising, hey, how come Assad isn't brought in with all the things he's done? So there's a lot of those politics going on. At the same time, this war has gone under uh, under scrutiny from the globe and you see Hamas that supposedly, eliminating Hamas is not possible. We said that from an ideology standpoint, but destroying their infrastructure was capable. That's what Israel was going to do. We don't know that. And he's got a lot of pressure. Lastly, as far as Trump is concerned, he's going to put a reinforcement as far as protecting Israel but he has to really get to the state of saying, hey, we're going to protect the Palestinians and Lebanese as well. And that ceasefire and pushing for that ceasefire, that's something powerful for him to do there in Ukraine as well. And maybe that's one way to stop this killing is to say, hey, stop all the warfare. Or otherwise, we don't support you. Let's come to the ground to try to negotiate some peace. That may be a powerful statement for him to do if he does that. All right. We leave it at that for tonight. Glenn Iglasio, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Ash.